What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, July 1st, 2019. And boy, howdy, do I love it when the Monday lines up with the first day of the month. It's just Me so too. perfect. It rarely happens. It's <laughs> yeah, I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes, 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. The pure one at Tim Gettys. Let Tim host. A lot wrong with that intro. Now you uh, still yeah. have the title of Forbes Thirty Under Thirty. Yes, yeah, but you for are sure. officially 30. thirty. Yesterday yes. was your birthday. Happy birthday, Woo! Tim! You know that, man. Look at you. That's it's true. You it's decided true. to share. I got blind. You sh- I was <laughs> going to say uh, you, the present you shared with the world, of course, was kind of funny prom. Available uh-huh. right now, YouTube.com/slash kind of funny. And in, in my job. my many late nights editing kind of funny prom, I think I brought back my eye problem. <sighs> I was driving to work today and my eyes were just crying and tearing. Like it's really, it's really bad. Miller, I'm God, let me see. Look at me. Ah, oh, dude, why? Yeah. Is it wanna, contacts? Is that the thing? No, it's you not the con- the contacts. Not the problem. Oh I'm my using, God, it's freaking me out. I just need to keep using the eye. Holder. Why'd you stop? Because it, it ran out of my prescription. You would refill it. But I mean, well, I did. Now I, I am doing that currently. I think you should take a break from the contacts. I'm going to. Yeah. Get, have, don't we have a Warby Parker sponsorship or something you can have to get better? Yeah, yeah but he never sent him back because he's a dumb dumb. All right, I we did, did on the show. Back. We did do it on the show. Yeah. You don't like any I'm of them? They're, they're yeah. coming. I have more coming. Okay. Just yeah. worried about you. Hey, no, hey, I'm taking care of myself. I'm doing the best are I you? can. Your eyes are exploding. I don't think you you can. seem sunburned. I am very sunburned. Your policy has always been to ignore the problem. Until but uh, this this time I'm not doing that. I'm off. taking it head on. I've talked to two separate doctors about this. No, no. You in their office or friend. on the phone? They're his friends. One in the office. Okay. Which got friend. my eye glue. Yeah, sure. Fixing okay. the problem. Sure, sure. Right, but that's a different situation. Now your new eye glue problem. I mean, I, I think it's time we talk about a transplant. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, Maybe you we can, can get you the first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do it all the time. <laughs> can I get my brother's? Ice cream scoop. No, when do you get the, get, when do you get the lace? I want to be huh? number one. Never. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, Kevin. I got a big head. And without the glasses. Oh, my God. It's huge. Without the glasses. <laughs> oh it's God. very obvious. I got a big um, old frying pan face. But with the glasses, no one can tell. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You get the LASIK, okay? Yeah. And then you just wear the frames. and Oh, my God. Let me finish and piss off Nick. Sure, I, that's what I want to be. I want to be 2019 version of Bernie Burns, walking around here. Oh no, I was thinking for you being go, a clown with these fake Ghostbusters? flake glasses. Ghostbusters? Huh? Yeah, no, yeah, 2016 Ghostbusters. That's, that's what inspired yeah. okay. that. Okay, well, conversation. today we're going to talk about uh, two stories about the PlayStation Five: Remedy buying back Alan Wake, and more. Because this is kind of funny games daily. Each and every week, on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash games with your questions, comments, concerns, everything under the video game sun. Then tune in to watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash games. Maybe you're watching live and you hear the same intro twice and then we talk about The Witcher and something else. What was the other thing we talked about? Oh, Jumanji. Oh, good. Because good something channel. went wrong and we need to test it and we fixed it. No big deal. Uh, if you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kind of funny dot com slash you're wrong tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe housekeeping for you can you believe it sucker rtx is this week all of kind of funny is going to be there you can come to our signing friday you can come see our panels on saturday uh kind of funny we need your sub more than fun house is at 2 p.m and michael jones and greg miller let's see what happens is at 5 30 p.m let's see what happens there's a comedy show as well the kind of funny comedy show but that's sold out to my mm-hmm. knowledge so yo slept on that one sorry thanks to our patreon producers for july colton yoder blackjack mohammed 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 if you're listening by the way and you might have already chimed in there was a subreddit thread about you wanting to know more about you who so are if you, you? Go chime in over there. Feel free at the kind of funny subreddit. Today we're about to you by Upstart and Experian, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> wow. Time for some news. I don't want four items on the Roper Report. Oh, Baker's doesn't. Like I don't want me to do. Like I don't know what you want me to do. I went 1975 Chevrolet trying to get out of the driveway. I I hit the go button and they just. Exhaust, you know. I got him dead. His eyes are falling out of his head. He's sunburned. Kevin, you you landed in SF at 1 30 in the morning. I sure did. I sure did. Jeez but here Louise. I am, not like a guy. How do you sissy. feel? That's what I see. Barrett's okay. you, you see fucking Barrett on Twitter yesterday? Oh, my hangover remedy. And everyone's like, oh, being young, being young. He's like, no, drink two glasses of water and take an Advil before you go to bed. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, you're young. Yeah. That's what it is. Try that shit at 30. You know what'll happen? Your eyes fucking become red balls of fire. <laughs> That's <laughs> if true. I, if I don't do it, I will get a terrible hangover. There's so. no mic on there. 
Well, I'm talking really loud. Yeah, he was talking now, really now loud. Now the mic's on. Number one, let's talk Sony's PlayStation 5 strategy. This is James Batchelor at GamesIndustry.biz. Light has been shed on Sony's strategy for its next generation console with a firm focus on attracting the hardcore player. This in itself is not too unusual. Members of this demographic are usually early adopters for the new consoles. But the Wall Street Journal has shared some insight from two anonymous Sony officials into how much Sony is prioritizing this audience. In a recent company strategy briefing, Sony chief executive Ken Yoshida described the PlayStation 5, parentheses, or whatever it's eventually going to be called, as a niche product aimed at hardcore players. The emphasis for the machine is on 8K resolution, ultra high definition graphics, as the platform holder believes visual quality to be key factors in players' purchasing decisions. The company is said to be concentrating on strengthening relationships with large publishers, as well as working on AAA exclusives from its internal studios. It is not targeting indie or smaller developers as resources are limited. Case in point, Sony is not planning to showcase independent developers at this year's Tokyo Game Show, which it has done in previous years. One of the officials explained that Sony believes people will buy the next console for high-quality exclusives rather than smaller games already available on mobile. Executives at smaller game firms say they feel they say they feel they snub they are snubbed. I think is what he means by this strategy. However, one Sony official believes that they still re, they they will still release games for PlayStation Five even without the platform holders' support because the popularity will mean it will be a key market they cannot ignore. The sources claim Sony is still concentrating on Xbox, or I'm sorry, Microsoft's Xbox is its main competitor, while Google and its Stadia streaming device are mainly considered a potential threat to the mid to long term development, uh, mid to long term, dependent on how internet tech and infrastructures improve. Tim, yes, absolutely none of this is surprising. None surprising at all. I do think there's a weird uh, emphasis in the story on TGS and indie titles not being there. Yeah, and they're saying that they have in the past. Is yeah. that true? I mean, I would I would believe Games Industry Up is if they're saying that T- TGS a blind spot for us is yeah. we don't go there often. But I definitely would think that Sony's probably doing similar to like how Judges Week. Uh, the independent game night is sponsored by uh, PlayStation. Got it. I okay. would assume it's something like that. Yeah, where Sony because is TGS for for as far as I understand is way more the JRPGs and the, the anime games. Sure, but I think there is an independent you know scene for both Western titles coming over and things that are happening in Japan. Hmm. Hmm. That PlayStation yeah, probably that does sense. the. PlayStation indie booth, whatever they want to call it, and put it there. Yeah. Even that removed, it doesn't surprise me, right? This is what we've talked about so much with the hubris of PlayStation and PlayStation 4, and where we are all like, oh my God, are we going to a PS2 to PS3 kind of situation, where PlayStation 4 launched on the exact same promise of this. We are the hardcore gamers machine. This machine is about games, 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 games. But when they said that, they also said in tandem, hey, here are all these indies. indies, where you're indies Here's indies. all these things that are happening. Here's I do Adam think Boyce. that we're in a different time, though. Like, I feel like indies uh, as a concept were way more important in 2013 than they are today in the sense of PlayStation needed to put a focus on them, where now they're there. Yeah. Like, we're, people are now s- seeking out these these indie titles because they're, they've they proven themselves that they're, they're not just like the... The, the Dark Horses. It's like, sure. no, indie games are some of the best games consistently year after year now, right? Yeah. And I think that, you know, PlayStation's focus on their high-quality first-party titles, that makes a lot of sense. That's what's going to sell the consoles, and they said it at the end of this article, but when there's more systems in people's homes, the indie games are going to come there. Well, that's the biggest thing about it in general, is that the race these days doesn't seem to be about, hey, can I get an exclu- can I get your game exclusively on my platform, indie yes. developer? It's more, hey, can I get it as exclusively on Game Pass or not even PlayStation Plus? Now, probably with Google, like that kind of thing seems to be the real foot race. That if I'm an indie developer, I'm making a game, I want to put it everywhere. And yeah. what we've talked about before with PlayStation 4, the fact that, hey, guess what? These machines are just PCs, meaning that it's easy to port your stuff over and do it. Yeah, now, for sure. Now, of course, there is a lackadaisical tortoise in the hair kind of thing there of, okay, cool. If, if you're saying that and also going to get this reputation out of the blocks with people you already have that, you know, they just don't care about indies anymore. Microsoft could easily capitalize on that. Google steam, uh, anybody else you can, you name it can capitalize on that and be like, Hey, PlayStation doesn't care about you. So come be a part of us and we'll give you X amount of budget and we'll do this kind of thing. It's the same way of like, you know, I, this is actually does that was an example that wasn't going to work at all. But I do think, when you think of indies nowadays, right, I think of n- Nindies, 
right? Because they actually do that. And I think of ID at Xbox and the fact that they were like when we went to the Xbox uh, event at E3 on the stage, right? It was we can play Gears, you can play this, and then there was a giant section of indies that were yeah. there that you can go play. I mean, I really think that Damon Baker leaving Nintendo, who really head up the the Nindies side of things, and now going to Microsoft is very telling. Um, I think that everything that we're seeing Microsoft kind of gobble up all these studios and yeah. investing money into different companies. Companies, I think that they are like they are gearing up for these things, and I think Game Pass is going to be a key part of that strategy. Sure, where it's going to be worth it to help fund, or even if it is just like a timed exclusive on Game Pass or Games Pass or whatever it is, um, compared to PlayStation. Oh yeah, or whatever. It's like that's going to go a long way in enticing people to try out the Xbox service. Whether or not they even need an actual Xbox to do that. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. I think it's not that they're like, it, don't get me wrong, it's not completely apples and oranges in terms of strategies going forward, but I do think that PlayStation is going to rely on the fact that God of War 2 and mm. Spider Man 2, and here are all these AAAs you're going to buy it for no matter what, let alone the third party AAAs you can play here, whereas Xbox does need something in terms of, cool, yeah. Halo, and here's the other, you know, 13 games our thir 13 first parties are working on. On top of that, we want you to buy the Ultimate Xbox Game Pass slash uh, uh, Xbox Live Gold, right? And when you get that, you are going to get something. Like, I, you know, the games cast I spent this week, I spent ranting and raving about how much I love Moonlighter, right? Moonlighter is, a fr is, a, is on Xbox Game Pass right now. You don't have to buy it on Switch, like, is where I'm playing it, or PlayStation, where you could also do it. You can just go play it on Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. When I talked about Riverbond, uh, this is something I actually, uh, I didn't flub up, but I didn't mention explicitly on games cast two weeks ago. I was like, played Riverbond. It's really fun, you know, dungeon crawler, beating stuff up, Jen and me we were playing co-op. It's available everywhere. We were playing on PlayStation 4. I think $25 is way too much for it, right? Somebody on the subreddit was like, hey, Greg didn't mention that it's free on Xbox Game Pass. Like, you have that already if you're paying the 10 bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I do think these are the right moves for Sony, though, right now. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think that this is a, a I just PS3 hate seeing, situation. I just, you know, as somebody who's covered PlayStation his entire career, I just hated seeing them move away. I, I loved the PlayStation that launched the PlayStation 4. And I know those people, and like most of those people aren't even there when you think of like Adam Boys or whatever, but like when Boys and Shu exchanging the thing, Geo out there in a hockey jersey talking about Vita and Indies games, like this was all awesome. Like mm. that was, it was awesome to see PlayStation, hey, we are for the gamers, by the gamers, here are the gamers who are making your games, and even Cerny, here's the people that are making your shit happen. And then to see it become more and more insular and become just like now, we watch the, you know, state of play, and it's just a disembodied voice. Like I love a good personality that you can connect yeah, to, but I'm absolutely. An old Although I will say, like I don't think that the, the, to rule out that for next gen. Like I, I do feel like we hit a point last year at E3 that Sony kind of had to redefine what its strategy is for these big trade shows because you can only show Death Stranding so many times. Yeah, you know, without yeah. it just like. Yeah. Upsetting people, and like we, I think we've hit that saturation point. But uh, then backing off for a while, and then just dropping the trailer. Then I don't think we're going to see something until a preview event before the game comes out. Yeah. You know, and it's like that's what they have to do. But you can only drip feed hot big news. So sure, like every so often, or else you know you're just kind of saying nothing. The same thing over and over again. Yeah. You just get you know wrong. Uh, number two, more PlayStation 5 news. Is Sony going to start scooping up some studios for the PlayStation 5? Mm -hmm. Sal Romano at Gamatsu has this. Sony Interactive Entertainment President and CEO Jim Ryan told the Nihon Kizier Shim... Shimmy bun uh, in a new interview that the company is considering the merger and acquisition of game development companies according to Ryan with companies such as Google entering the games industry quote content is becoming more important than ever before end quote companies new to the games industry looking at the market with hopes is something we definitely welcome Ryan said he emphasized Sony Interactive Entertainment has 25 years of experience in the games industry and has big assets uh, do you think they're going to start scooping other studios first party assets up? They're um, big old asses. Uh, yeah, right? Isn't this like a... It's been a uh, while. Uh, yeah, it has been a while, but I imagine people are always looking, and I think that with Microsoft kind of literally gobbling up everyone, yeah. Sony must be like, who do we want? Is there anyone that we should jump on before Microsoft does? The nanobiologist writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like you can. It says, what's up, Greg and Tim? Jim Ryan has risen and spoken out on if Sony will acquire new studios, but this we already knew since the investor meeting back in May. So, you know what that means. Wild speculation time. What do you think will be acquired by Sony? Will it be Quantic Dream and ensuring the interactive storytelling they do becomes a Sony platform exclusive? Or will it be Insomniac after their huge hit Spider-Man and keeping the super talented studio it to themselves after they had a bittersweet taste of the Xbox ecosystem? Are there other studios that people may not see coming like Sega or Psyonix? Uh, no way with Psyonix. Epic just 
wrote them a gigantic check. Uh, Xbox surprised many of us with their studio acquisitions the past couple of years with Obsidian and Double Fine. So it will be very interesting to see what Sony will do to match Xbox great, great gets and how the possibility newly acquired studios will do to keep up with the bar of PlayStation has set. I don't know. I understand that, yeah, the investor thing back was like, oh, yeah, we're always, you know, similar thing, always looking, maybe what we blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't think, if Sony's going to buy somebody, if, because I, I just don't buy it 100%. I think it'll be somebody super small. I think it'll be a small indie team that's doing something they think is interesting, similar to, I know they didn't buy it, but a that game company thing, right? Yeah. Or a giant sparrow who had these different kinds of exclusive deals, weren't full out bought. But that's something I could see more than them going, because like, yeah, what, what third party makes sense anymore? Think bigger, Greg. Xbox, they're gonna you buy can't Xbox. Can't beat them, join them, baby. Oh my god, yeah, that would be no, big. Yeah, I don't know if that would happen. But um, <laughs> Sega would be crazy. You yeah. know that that is one that I I feel is right for the taking. At some point, you know, it's like they they would ha definitely have the the advantage there with the Persona Seven, even though it is exclusive already um, for now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think that there's there are titles there that could make sense to be exclusive, but. There's just not that many third parties that are, are smaller than the Ubisofts of the world. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. are in that area that are, I mean, that like, are I wouldn't bigger even, than Sega, indies, but Sega smaller Sega, I think, is too big, and I also think Sega just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Who the, I understand Sonic is a valuable IP. He's not, though. Like, what What are we going to do with him? You know what I mean? Like, what? what and what's going to happen Go fast, that PlayStation... Will do that? If, if Atlas would make sense in, in a way, except, yeah, most of their games are already exclusive to PlayStation, so what's the point? Yeah. Then it's like, what do we get out to? You get into, like, Gearbox? No, Gearbox no, doesn't yeah. need the money and that is fine with their giant 2K deals and whatever the hell's happening over there. Yeah. Uh, I think Remedy would be an interesting call, but Remedy's about to come up in a next news story about the moves they're making on their own. Uh, you start getting into, yeah, I mean... Like, so what about Insomniac, though? Insomniac, like, uh, never say never, uh -huh. obviously, but I think it's the fact that, like, I think Ted Price and company over there love being independent and they, they love being able to make their own things. And I think, you know, you look at something like the giant rigmarole they went through with a uh, fuse or whatever for ea right their game that had to be done and redone their art style change and i think that was like the number one of those number one reasons of like this is why we gotta not work with people unless they're gonna let us be us yeah and so i, I think i mean like we'd be foolish right now to sit here and i know i think it's happened in interviews i've had with ted where it's come up of like you know that they've had conversations about being bought before and have stayed away from it i don't think anything's changed there and i yeah. also don't think you know he's talking about off the heels of spider-man like I'm not trying to insult Insomniac. I love Insomniac. Insomniac's super talented, right? Like, outside, like, that was their huge hit, right? And outside of that, it's Ratchet and Clank. What, another PlayStation exclusive? Like, it's not yeah, like, that is the problem. Spider Man 2 is not going to go multi platform. That's not how the, I'm sure the deal PlayStation struck when that happened. Yeah. And so, like, if you're already, it's, it's the same thing as always, you know, why buy the cow when you're getting the sex for free? Like, it's right there. Like, yeah, they already have these right. great deals. They have, right, all, right. they have all these friends with benefits over there giving them milk and having sex with them. They yeah. don't need to worry about jumping into bed and buying them. And it's this thing of, like, even with Xbox, like going on and doing all these different things they're buying, like, okay, then that's awesome. That's great. Like, I can't wait to see what, you know, Double Fine's going to look like with them and that. But it's like, does, I it's mean, it's a different game. I mean, I think the Games Pass thing really does change the, the landscape of what all that looks like. That mm -hmm. is just trying to add value to the, the middle uh, of video games that, yeah. you know, Sony's clearly focused on the top right now uh, when it comes to stuff. I think that. Four years ago, it would have been a very real thing to be like Nintendo. Well, that was the old. Know? I mean, and that was Switch the old thing. I mean, happened. Podcast Beyond, we went back and forth all the time about this. Of like, who will be the next person PlayStation will buy, right? And they just went quiet for the longest time and didn't buy anybody. Like, Qu the fact that PlayStation doesn't own Quantic Dream is crazy. Mm -hmm. That Quantic Dream was working so closely. Now that's over, of course. You know, Quantic did this whole thing with the investment money they got that they're going multi-platform and doing this different thing. It's already happening. Obviously, you can pick up the, their games on like PC and stuff. I mean that with them gone, it's like, well, what is a what is a Sony first party anymore? What is Shu looking for in Sony Worldwide Studios when he's looking for great people to join that team, great developers to join that team? I have an answer, Greg. Yeah. That I, it's not going to happen. God, you just look so douchey with the glasses. I, I know, I, I hate love it. it. <laughs> it's not going to happen, but I do think that it would make a lot of strategic sense and would really bolster their first party titles even more. Capcom. Yeah, Capcom's an interesting one, but it, didn't Capcom had like the most successful whatever in, you know. I mean, that's the thing is, yeah, they're killing it right now. Yeah. Um, with just Monster Hunter World alone, they'd be yeah. killing it, but you add on Devil Resident Evil. 5, Resident yeah. Evil as a franchise at this point, yeah. you know, with 7 and 2 being the successes that they were. It would be interesting. You know, I feel like them more than anyone else, because like Sega, you're right, it's like, okay, Sonic is Sonic, but like Capcom has real IP. 
and you know, real IP that can be brought back in substantial ways, and real IP that can just continue to keep going in ways that are going to be successful and make a lot of money for them and whoever owns them. But I also don't think that that's a necessary thing right now. Back It'd be to, cool though. Back to the the oh, Sony PlayStation Five strategy, right? James Baxter reporting what the Wall Street Journal was saying. Uh, the company is said to be concentrating on strengthening relationships with large publishers, as well as working with AAA exclusives for its internal studios. It's not targeting into your smaller devs as resources are limited. So, like, it puts you into this weird thing. You're already talking to tri- to AAA third parties, right? So they yeah. are talking to Ubisoft, they are talking to Capcom, they are talking to whatever. They're not looking to partner with indies to do anything. They're out to do. Because they have the resources. I'm just trying to figure out. Like, I feel like, and I granted, it's not knowing. I guess the what the portfolio and what the launch lineup for PlayStation Five is going to be. If I'm trying to buy things up specifically for PlayStation Five, then I'm buying things up that I think are smaller studios that can flip their games quickly, right, and get them there quickly. Because that's how this always works. Is that when you're a game like Outlast, right, and you are on the launch of a console, guess what? You get a lot of sales because hey, that no, not that much to play. DC Universe Online saw such a huge increase at PlayStation 4 launch yeah. because, hey, there's uh, nothing to play and here's this game to get into. Well, it's the weird chicken and egg thing of, you know, it's you can't put too many super high profile games at launch because there's not enough systems in the wild for people to be playing them for those games to sell the millions that they would have sold years later into the life cycle, right? Yeah. Um, and that does boost and help the, the smaller titles, but you still need that one marquee title. You don't need it, but like... We've seen that that strategy still does work with Breath of the Wild recently, right? And we know that Halo Infinite's coming with Xbox next year, so PlayStation's going to need something, or do they? I don't know. Like, I feel like that's where. Well, this you gets figure PlayStation Five's got to be. Uh, I mean, what? I don't know. Yeah, how you want? Because if it's also launching in fall, which we imagine you it imagine, is, right? Yeah, yeah. If, if so Xbox is going, they're going. You got to imagine that Xbox next and the PlayStation Five are going to launch within a month of each other. I'd be willing to bet. October, November, they're both going to be released, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Somewhere in there, what would you what would you say for what their release dates? Yeah, um, I would think both are well. It'll be like it was last time around, right? Where it was like PlayStation one week, Xbox the next. Um, so probably end of October, beginning of November. Yeah, I, I would imagine first week in November is what is going to be most likely for both. Okay, of them. okay, somewhere in there. If Xbox is launching. With its focus on power, with its focus on all the stuff that they've been talking about, yeah, yeah, and Halo Infinite, and PlayStation Five launches, it need. I feel like it needs. We're in a different time where it's not going to be like oh, the third parties of the the fall holiday season are going to kind of carry this. If you're competing with Halo, right? Yeah, Horizon Two. Hopefully, you know, like I, I don't know what is that title though. And that's the problem. Is it just yeah? I don't. If, if, like you figure, I, yeah, I don't want it to be a repackage of Death Stranding. I don't want it to be a repackage of Last of Us Part Two. So then, what is it? Ghost of Tsushima? Is that a is that a cross gen launch or is it just a PlayStation Five thing? Uh, I still think that all the the big PS4 games from here on out, I are, are going to be like Xbox One X style patch updates Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. for the PS5. Yeah, I agree with that too. Sure. Yeah, Horizon Two would be huge, but again, like, is that enough time? And then, like, do you, uh, you, the problem with that game is you don't want to rush Gorilla. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't want it to be that. Hey, you are the launch game, which means you cannot delay. Nothing can go wrong. You cannot sit there and like you get. I don't. It, it, launch games are great, obviously, but like, lots of times in more recent history, I would say, and you, you're free in kindoffunny.com slash as wrong as yelling at me. Uh, m- more recent times, launch games for console games are, aren't that amazing, right? Mm-hmm. They're great at the time. They're beautiful. They do this, but it's the same thing as always. Like, oh, man, we put the gimmicky touchpad and light bar in there, so there's a whole bunch of crap. People are trying to play yeah. with that crap. We, we, we don't Rise. want that. We don't want that. Or they're like Rise, right? Where it's like, oh, there's something cool here, but it's not enough for an entire game. Yeah. And I don't want I don't want to see Horizon get that. Yeah. I don't want to see Horizon become that. I don't know, man. Yeah, it just PlayStation is in a weird point. Like, we're going in circles here, but sure. like I feel like it's in hey, welcome to this multiple discussion. Sure. conversations here. Yeah, uh, like a couple years ago at E3, Sony kind of had to reinvent the strategy because they were running out of titles. But they're only running out of titles because you'd be hoping that they're prepping titles for PS5, which maybe for the first time ever we do get a smooth transition, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like we don't get a big break like we saw with the PS4, where for years we didn't get a steady release of quality releases. Right, like we 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 got bloodstained, we got Order eighteen eighty six first, and like then it started Bloodborne, like, uh, yeah, Bloodborne, and it started uh, picking up steam from there, right? Yeah, 
Um, and then the last couple of years has been like, bah, 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 bah. And I, I feel like they're going to continue that level right at the gate. Yeah. That'd be cool. And that's the thing is like, I just don't know. Like I'm thinking the one I jumped to in terms of, in the, I'm going to say it, but it doesn't make sense. Phoenix Labs, people who made Dauntless. Mm. What if Dauntless was a PlayStation 5 only? But it's like, that's an Xbox move with all due respect to Xbox. Yeah, like totally. that's how Xbox do it where they buy that. They still support it everywhere, but it's here and this is the best experience. And it's the same thing of dropping into like, okay, what about Yacht Club Games? Like, They've made a money. They've made. I, this is me not knowing their financials, but Shovel Knight is a fucking phenomenon. They're not going to be in the mood to sell. Let alone, I don't think PlayStation cares about getting Shovel Knight Two to be exclusive to them. Yeah, like it's just a weird thing of like what. I just think there are very few people know? they could get that are putting out the quality of titles that they'd want from first party, and I think that Capcom is one of the better answers there of like level games that could. Have that and get their whole stable of developers working on their stuff. Yeah, it's but, interesting, but it's just I don't I don't know. It's yeah, I I don't that's my thing. Is since I don't think that I in the same breath of saying Capcom and saying Phoenix Labs, neither of those make sense to me in the current structure of what PlayStation is. Mm -hmm. And so I just can't see it happening. Yeah. Even like Ready at Dawn. That they never bought Ready at Dawn. And now Ready yeah. at Dawn's doing so much awesome Oculus VR stuff. Like it's a different time in games, and I just don't I don't even know if scooping up stuff when you're PlayStation and I understand we're now talking about like, well, that's this generation. What's next generation? I don't think next generation it comes down to having more first party studios. I think it's if anything, having them make what you the exclusives they're making right now. Yeah, Xbox see, seems I, to I make their stable. Make I sense. think that a, a key thing's gonna end up being more first party games, and you need more studios to make more yeah. games because if they do, if the pattern I just talked about continues, and it's like they start the PS5 generation with back to back every couple months, like let's say every three months, four months, get a new uh, title. Then what's going to happen at the end of the cycle? Yeah, is are we going to see the the flip there? Because that's bad. They need to keep that going, right? But it's also they're finding so much success with not owning studios. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Make a Bloodborne two. Make yeah. a Spider Man two. Find more relationships like that. I, yeah. I don't. Uh, obviously, I think by the way it's all played out, yeah, uh, Disney isn't interested in exclusives on Sp Star Wars games. But why not? If that was something we could do, get a Star Wars game exclusively. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get a get a Knights of the Old Republic three or whatever, just exclusive to PlayStation. Yeah, that kind of shit to motivate right. hardcore gamers, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, all right, is that even a thing that's going to happen? And that is that worth? I think that's that. I would be more interested in the third party exclusives they could make happen, and relationships they could build. Which, granted, I know Insomniac would argue that Spider Man is first party, but you understand what I mean. Uh, there's got to be more there, and I feel like that's more of the juice of what the, what's been successful this generation and what you need to have successful next generation. Buying a studio now and having them make a game in X amount of years, because that's the other thing too. Is like you know I, I saw somebody in your wrong shot. I think it was Kebabs be like, well remember Insomniac's got these VR things, so that couldn't that would negate that deal. I'm like, well no, that do, look at uh, Double Fine is just got bought by Microsoft. Is still publishing everywhere, right? Yeah. Like they're I think for the games they've promised that they're going everywhere with, like. You need to buy somebody right now that's making something that can only go somewhere else? I don't know. I mean, Final Fantasy VII Remake is in a weird place right now because they're only talking about the PlayStation 4 version. Yeah. And they, they keep the phrasing they use is first on PlayStation and like they're they're not really talking about other things. But as far as I understand, we don't know that it's Xbox. Like that could just be PC. Someone in your round, let me know if that's not true. But I don't think they've ever shown the Xbox logo or talked about Xbox when it comes to Seven Remake. And it's like if a game of that caliber from Square, from a third party, can be "quote unquote" exclusive. Like that's insane. Imagine Final Fantasy 16 if Sony were to be like, "Yeah, it's exclusive." You just said something interesting there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't think Square Enix likes having Western studios. Oh, they don't seem to know what they're doing with them. They don't seem to promote their games well. They don't seem to do any of this shit. That would be interesting. If Square Enix was like, listen, we do great with the RPG stuff, but your Tomb Raiders, your Deus Exes, maybe Avengers, who knows? And that's where it gets tricky. Yeah. That's where it gets really tricky. Uh, we don't want those. Like, if PlayStation was to buy Crystal Dynamics, that would be fucking phenomenal. Yes. If they were to buy Deus, uh, 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 IDOS, uh -huh. fucking crazy. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I guess they don't need to buy Square. Yeah, could exactly. Just be Let's go in there and get it. Even, even if they, even if huh. they, um, uh, you figure it not granted, I know IO just got out, but IO Interactive with Hitman, that would be very interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And that would make sense too if suddenly Hitman went exclusive and that was that thing. Because again, we're talking about games that I think get lost in the third party shuffle. Tomb Raider, uh, Deus Ex, um, I would even say Just Cause, uh, which is Avalanche, obviously, um, and Hitman. If those suddenly became PlayStation exclusives and it was, all right, cool, you have 
three years and basically unlimited resources to make this for one fucking platform. Yeah. Imagine what that would be. Now, granted, Tomb Raider gets weird in terms of licensing, but if it was that suddenly they had Tomb Raider and it's they Uncharted is dead, but we're giving you Lara Croft now exclusively. That could be interesting. Lovely. Yeah, we'll see though. But again, what gets n- weird with it, of course, and why at least Crystal wouldn't happen, I would imagine, is Avengers. They're already talking about you know everything we- for the game's life or for the first year is free or whatever. Like yeah. they clearly have a multi-year plan. There's a contract with Marvel. That's a little bit more tricky than, hey, we're I'm Tim Schafer and yeah, we're gonna publish Psychonauts two everything, but then afterwards we're probably yeah. exclusive everywhere. Huh. Number three, speaking of ownership and everything like that, Remedy owns Alan Wake again. This is Christopher Dring over at GamesIndustry.biz. The publishing rights for survival horror game Alan Wake has reverted back to developer Remedy. The IP was previously owned by Microsoft. The news coincides with Remedy receiving a one-time royalty income for its previously released games of 2.5 million euros, right? Or is that pounds? I can't remember. 2.5 UK money. Uh, This money will not impact the firm's financial results and will be invested into developing new games. Alan Wake is a cult favorite Xbox 360 and later PC exclusive, which sold over 3 million copies. It wasn't quite enough to justify a full sequel, but it did result in two DLC add-ons and a standalone digital-only spinoff called American Nightmare. In total, the franchise has sold over 4.5 million games. Now, that was Christopher Drain Games Industry Biz. When I was going through for more news, GameSpot had this addendum. Remedy says it could bring Alan Wake to different platforms. The company earlier announced it had acquired the publishing rights to the series, which until now has only come to PC and Xbox 360 from Microsoft. When asked by GameSpot uh, what this meant for the future of the franchise, Remedy replied, quote, The only thing we want to clarify now, only want to clarify, now that Remedy owns the publishing rights, is that we could bring Alan Wake to different platforms if we so choose. We have nothing to announce now, end quote. This, there's a, a theme here going on with this, this day's t- topics. This is weird to me because you look at Xbox, and not to say that Alan Wake is like this tentpole franchise, but I think compared to a lot of Microsoft's lineup, it kind of is. Yeah. Right? We got the Halo, we got Forza, we got Gears, there's Alan Wake. Sure. So what them, Xbox exclusives are you going back to? Yeah. For them to let that go, like even if, if nothing's going to happen with it, I think that's kind of weird in a place right now where. Okay, they have a bunch of studios, but what are they doing with them? Yeah, yeah. You know? To get rid of one of your few IP that's IP, just you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. And that's an interesting one. Because I do think it it smacks of the Hitman stuff with Square and IO of hey, this isn't our level of success, but we also don't want to sit on it forever. We I mean and I'm sure Remedy was like, we'd like it back if we can get it back. Uh it'll be interesting to see what happens with this. And I do think that putting it on PlayStation will do really well for them. If they drop Alan Wake, I haven't played Alan Wake. If they do an HD, whatever, Alan Wake, I haven't played Alan Wake since the 360 back at IGN. I barely remember anything other than the flashlight. I would totally be down to play a a version of that to run around and see what that's about again. And I think coming off of Quantum Break, coming into Control, it is, I mean, Quantum Break had a bunch of Alan Wake references in it of like making, you know, comments and things to it because that's what people know them for. That's what people like them for. I think Control is going to be really interesting. I'm, I'm as a, a Remedy fan, obviously, and having friends at that studio, uh, I'm in for Control because I like their weird games. <laughs> I really liked Quantum Break. I really like what I've played of Control. But even me and Andy being super in on Control, I was like, I don't know if this is going to be a mainstream success. Like, there's yeah. super weird stuff in the demo of, like, you walk over to the janitor's closet or his his office, and there's a poster of him on the door, and then you open it, and he's standing the exact same pose. And it's, like, meant to be weird as fuck, and it's like... This is weird as fuck. Like, I don't know if this is a game that speaks to everybody, but in the same way, I don't think judgment speaks to everybody. If it finds its audience, that's yeah. great. And I think they have their audience. And so even if a control comes out and it's a cult hit and people are like, this is good and it really didn't get a shot, if they can then jump off of that in a couple years, maybe yeah. a year, and be like, hey, Alan Wake, it's a bundle and it's all the stuff on PlayStation and uh, here you go. Maybe that'd be great. Maybe Congrats be to Remedy, fun. though. Yeah, you great. Know, I'm sure they're stoked about this. Yeah, of course. Yeah, good folks. Uh, they're finally coming home. Uh, Stead John at points out that it was Euros. I should be able to tell because it's an E. And it does look true. like it an does e. look like an E. I'm sorry. Sometimes I just get there and I How freak do you out. Not know the difference between these things. Because I'm reading really quickly and I don't. I, I don't have time to think, Kev. I'm talking. Oh, okay. I'm mid sentence. You know what I mean? Uh, nanobiologist says Alan Wake may now also come to switch and build hype for the possible sequel that was alluded to at the end of the DLC in the main story correct of course obviously it's not just a PlayStation thing and switch would be a brand new way to get that out to a whole bunch of different people number four Pokemon has a response to the inability to transfer Pokemon 
to Sword and Shield. This is Sword and Shield producer Masuda. Thank you to all of our fans for caring so deeply about Pokemon. Recently, I shared the news that some Pokemon cannot be transferred to Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. I've read all your comments and appreciate your love and passion for Pokemon. Just like all of you, we are passionate about Pokemon and each and every one of them is very important to us. After so many years of developing the Pokemon video games, this was a very difficult decision to me, for me. Uh, I'd like to make one thing clear. Even if a specific Pokemon is not available in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, that does not mean it will not appear in future games. The world of Pokemon continues to evolve. The Galar region offers new Pokemon to encounter, trainers to battle, and adventures <laughs> to embark on. We are pouring our hearts into these games, and we hope you will look forward to joining us on this new journey. Didn't say much there, Tim. No, and this is the problem with where we are at as a society at this point, where it's just like the, you know, squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? And it's all these people online complaining and demanding answers, demanding a response, and then they get this type of response, right. and then they're mad that the response didn't say anything. It's weird, though, because it does. It's Did a, like, the initial response the from him just talk about like it's well yeah there's this, this game looks different so we can't just import the old stuff yes but like now there he is clearing up like they will be here eventually okay right? like that that, that that future games thing yeah uh, even if a specific Pokemon is not available in Pokemon Sword or po and Pokemon Shield that does not mean it will not appear in future games yes so that means it could show up in Sword and Shield still or, or you saying whatever like, Sword and Shield and chain mail thing i don't know whatever the third game is going to be or whatever gotcha, it's okay. like i don't know or their dlc plans or i don't know how they're gonna gonna do it all i just think that the, this is an empty statement but it's also i don't know what people expect them to be like you know what we're gonna change it we're, we're going back on everything and it's just we saw it with sonic the hedgehog with the designs being changed and stuff sure. and it's like you know demanding change at what point is that cool and at what point is it just being really annoying and loud yeah and just mob mentality stuff. Sure. And I think with this Pokemon thing, it is a two way street of it's a bunch of people that I think personally are way too angry about stuff that they don't need to be. And also the other side of it being like a very tone deaf Pokemon company mm -hmm. that make boneheaded decisions that make absolutely no sense for what their core players want. You know? Yeah. And it's like when those two things both exist, there's going to be a lot of issues. Strife. And that's when transparency that we always fight for becomes difficult because where's the level of transparency? There has to be a line where it's like, all right, we're going to stop talking about stuff because we got to do this stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I think that this is just a perfect example of a shitty situation where nothing can be done that's going to make everyone here happy. And the Pokemon company are going to keep doing what they are doing for better or worse. And honestly, I'm on the side of it of like looking at this game. I'm like, cool. It's more Pokemon. I'm excited to play it, but it's not revolutionary. And like at this point, into the franchise's life, it should be. Yeah. And I feel like the fact that it's not is what makes this such a, a hot topic, where it's like, so you're telling me you're giving me the same thing, just a little different, but less? Like, that's what sure. it feels like. Sure, sure, sure. Whereas, like, we're giving you something completely new. So, yeah, yeah, it's not gonna, you're not gonna have all those other things. Easier pill to before. swallow, right? If it's yeah. like, holy shit, this is revolutionary. It's, it's, it's like, it's new and it's different, and there are only, there are 150 new ones, and that's it. Yeah. It's like a, a soft reboot. We're starting fresh. We're going forward. I think people would be excited about that. This is to saying, hey, all the people that have been excited for every re release the last decade that have worked really hard on the catching Pokedex. them all and yeah. getting all that. It's like, this game's for you, but like, yeah, not really yet. Got to buy more too in the future. Please be excited. Please you know? be excited. And it's just like, we're just in a different place where please be excited. It's not an acceptable answer to things. Hmm. For some people. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to see I what I should be excited for next, but it's still so far away. Tim, if I want to know what came to the Mom and Grab shops today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Do, 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 yeah. Out today, Redneck Skeet Shooting on Switch. <laughs> God damn. Raven's Guard Arena on PC. Fairy Tale Solitaire Red Riding Hood on PC and Mac. Hangman on PC. And then my favorite of the day, Boom Boom Bova on PC and Mac. Yeah, boom, dude. Boom, boom, bovine. boom, bovine. Boom, boom, bovine. Iconic real world six flat rides are, uh, and attractions are now coming to uh, Atari's popular mobile game, Roller Coaster Tycoon Touch, with a free uh, game update. That's cool. You, you love it. You love a good six flags ride. I do love six flags rides. Which one's your favorite? They got a Superman coaster, right? Typhoon. 
Typhoon Lagoon? Typhoon. That's DC, I guess. Yeah. Or no, uh, Disney. Uh, the Padre Tatsu, is also... That's the name of it. Ta- Padre is now on uh, PS4 and Xbox as well. New dates for you. Uh, Crash Team Racing Hell yeah, is baby. getting... Ni- yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to read it as on July 3rd at 12 a.m. GMT. All Crash yeah. Team Racing Nitro-fueled players that purchase the game will get the first Grand Prix season called Nitro Tura 2. Nitro Tur- Tour. That's Nitro Tour. Tour. It's a, I, you see, it's shoved together. It's screwing me up. Pushed to their consoles for free, which gives fans more game to love, including a brand new track, Twilight Tour, to conquer. Yep. You still playing Crash Team Racing? Oh, yeah, baby. Still enjoying Working it? Working on that 100%. I already beat the adventure mode. Game hard as fuck, and yeah. I love it. Okay. God, it's satisfying. What a fantastic title. Uh, I haven't been able to talk about it because I, I missed Gamescast last week. Uh, it's, it's as good as it ever has been. Um, loading could be better. Could yeah. be a lot better. I'm going to tell you that right okay. now. You're playing on Switch. Uh, I am playing on the Switch. Okay. Um, so that, that, that definitely, I imagine, makes it uh, even more unbearable. Um, but yes, yeah, Spyro's coming soon. And the, the Grand Prix Pack 3, I think it was. So that's exciting stuff. I love the amount of content in the game. It's kind of ridiculous that the DLC plan is as robust, robust as it is and free. So very exciting stuff. Love the game. Highly cool. recommend you guys play it. Deals of the day for you. Xbox has announced the games with gold inside is available for free July 1st through the 31st on Xbox One. Big Crown Showdown is available July 16th to August 15th on Xbox One. Castlevania Symphony of the Night is available July 1st to the 15th on Xbox One and Xbox 360. And Meet the Robinsons is available July 16th to the 31st on Xbox One and Xbox 360. Tim? Yeah. It's time for Reader Mail. Oh my God, yeah it is. But first... I'm going to tell you about our sponsors. Up first is Upstart. As most of you have found out the hard way, getting into debt is easy. Getting out of debt is hard, especially if your FICO score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score and offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. If you've listened to Kind of Funny and Upstart ads before, you know that I've struggled with this myself, of course. Uh, I, it's You get into debt. I, when I got here, to, I was like, oh, I'm going to come here work for IGN. And then I made no money. And then I got divorced. And then I had to take out a Alone. And let me tell you, that sucked. But Upstart goes beyond the traditional FICO score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than a credit score. They believe in you and they understand that. Uh, they will make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate Check your rate in a few simple minutes and it won't affect your credit score. Great. What's the best part? Uh, Once the loan is approved, most people get their funds the very next business day, Tim. The next day! Wow. Exactly. Uh, See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. And hurry to upstart.com slash kfgames to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and it won't affect your credit. That's upstart.com slash kfgames. Man. Up next, Experian. You know the better your credit score, the easier it is to get stuff you want or the less you have to pay. So the question is, why is it so hard to raise your score? Now it won't be thanks to Experian. They've launched Experian Boost, a brand new way to instantly increase your credit scores for free. A higher credit score can help you establish and get access to credit and preferred rates for the things you want and need in life. Experian is on a mission to help boost America's credit score, which will help millions of people across the country build and get better access to credit. People all across America have already raised their credit scores with Experian Boost, and you should too. For the first time ever, paying your utilities and cell phone can instantly improve your credit score. Experian Boost works by giving you credit for the bills you're already paying uh, through your bank account. Like water, gas, electric, cable, and more. Uh, It used to take months to see your credit score rise a point or two. With Boost, you can increase your credit scores instantly. Boost is free to use and only available from Experian. As I pointed out in this ad read before, as you may recall, I had a credit card. I thought I paid it off and walked away. Then I tried to get another credit card, and they were like, no, your credit's bad. And I was like, wait, what? And I got my report, and it turned out that I had screwed up my credit back in the day because they'd put some like finance charge on something I never knew about. It sat there, like 56 bucks, sat there for a bunch of things, dinged up my credit, took a long time to rebuild. This would have helped out a lot, Tim. It would have. You needed uh, that boost. I need that Experian boost. I can't believe it's taken this long for someone to do this. What are you waiting for? Experian boost can potentially help raise and establish your access to credit. Boost your FICO score instantly for free. Boost is only available at Experian.com slash KF Games. That's E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N dot com slash games, games, games. KF Games. <sighs> Sorry. KF Games, 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 games. Uh, Tim? Yes. JBR has been writing in a lot for this question for JBR, you. JBR. But you keep not saying? coming to the show. Mm-hmm. So here I'm it here is. Now. JBR wrote in to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames and says, Greetings, Greg and Tim. Tim, 
Now that Square Enix has put the Final Fantasy soundtracks on Spotify, mm. what can we do in our power for Nintendo to put their soundtracks across dozens of games onto Spotify and other platforms? I'd love to listen to Paper Mario Thousand Year Door on Spotify while I drive. Is it possible that Nintendo makes this happen with our demand for it? Um, I will say that I have downloaded all of the Distant Worlds Final Fantasy albums, and I've been listening to them religiously on my drives to work, and it, it feels good. Um, so, so shout out to them for doing this. Um, I think that there is actually a good chance of Nintendo doing this at some point. I think that Square kind of showed the way to do it correctly, which is have everything well organized and the artwork right and the track list right and the producers, everything. It's just like it is buttoned up and they did it as one release of here's everything, right? Um, Nintendo has traditionally been pretty good about putting out soundtrack CDs, really? at least in Japan. Okay. That is where this gets a little bit interesting. I don't know about the licensing and all that stuff. Um, and they don't do it for every game, but there, there's a fair amount of soundtracks out there, like in CD album form um, from Nintendo for the different games. So the content is out there. It's just a matter of them seeing the demand and getting it Sure. onto the services and with how nintendo's been recently i think that they really care about their ip in, in a way that's broader than just gaming and i think with next year with the mario movie coming out and then working on the theme parks and stuff like i think that they understand that there's a value to this type of stuff and they're going to want to dip their toes into as many revenue streams as possible for these characters and i think that spotify is hard to ignore you know so you're saying everybody should just tweet at doug bowser about it I don't know about that. Okay. I don't, okay. I don't know Sorry. who the right person Sorry. would be. Like, sure. I don't, I don't actually motive. have a great answer to the question of like who they need to talk to or what needs to be done. Sure. I think it just will happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it will. I, I think it, within two years it'll happen. Within two years, the Nintendo soundtracks will be on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll take that bet. I said it won't. No. Everybody, write it down. July 1st, 2021. I need you to tell us what's happened and then how Kevin died. Uh, Gilly Brums writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says hi Greg and Tim happy Monday What's up? with the recent release of Mario Maker 2 it made me think few games can pull off a map slash level editor as the key selling point Mario Maker Little Big Planet Mod Nation Racers Dreams if you count it why do you think that these games are so successful for that reason many games have additional modes to create user generated content some of which are deeply fleshed out GTA Halo Forge etc so why have the Nintendos and media molecules of the world done it? Would love some of your industry insight. Also, do either of you have a favorite map slash level slash game editor mode? Uh, or editor, game mode editor. Uh, I've always been into Forge mode in, ha in Halo. Hope you had a great birthday weekend, Tim. Uh, I mean, Forge mode is, I think, the right answer. It's an insane, uh, the things that you can create in that that are very high quality. I think that... I wouldn't necessarily call those games major successes. Yeah? Yeah. Like Mod Nation Racers? No, that's he's reaching at. Yeah. I would say for the argument, Little Big Planet and Mario Maker. Yeah. Yeah. Little and Big I think Planet, I think it, it worked because it introduced a, a cute mascot that PlayStation was lacking at that point sure. in its life cycle. And uh, it also was a, a quality game that was different than anything that we'd seen before. Yeah. And I think that it was a mix of art style and just a weird PlayStation at that time where like they put out weird games. Well, the, the reason I think both Mario Maker and Little Big Planet are like acclaimed for their creation tools is the fact that they are marketed and built around their creation tools. Like that's the reason why that stands out more than GTA or Halo Forge, I think, is that mm. Halo is marketed as this amazing shooter, awesome single player, play it co-op with your friends, then there's the multiplayer. Like Forge is in that. But it's not, if you're on a list like the three or four main bullet points on why you're excited for Halo, that's not one of them. And the same thing with GTA. Giant story, living world. You, like, you can follow people to their places of business. All this crazy shit happens. Then you can go online and do all this crazy shit, blah, blah, blah. Like, the fact that you can go in and make things there, also not like one of the main bullet points. Whereas with Mario Maker, right, like, that's the whole shtick of Mario Maker. It's like, yeah, there's these Nintendo levels, but then you're playing your friends' levels. You're seeing Dan Riker and Patrick Klepek go at it again. You're seeing Andy Cortez clips on, from Twitch of him screaming. Like, you see people doing it, and that's the thing people are sharing the most. I've seen so much of, hey, here's my level. Try it out, code creation stuff. And I, I haven't even seen the 100 Nintendo levels yet. I've only seen people screwing around with the other stuff. And yeah. the same thing with Little Big Planet, right? If Play, Create, Share was their whole thing of, you're playing those levels to unlock different things to use in your levels. And then as Little Big Planet evolved to make your own games, to do your own things. You know, I don't count Dreams in there either yet because I think Dreams remains yeah. to be seen in, in terms of how that's going to do in terms of selling that to someone. I think Mario Maker is unique in the sense that it is... A very interesting nostalgia retro uh, way to do a video game, 
you look at the history of Mario and it's like, what's the next 2D Mario going to be? Right? Yeah. Like, th- I still think that that's a big question of like where in, in 2020, what does that look like for Nintendo to put out a, f- a brand new 2D Mario game? The last time we got one was 2013 with uh, New Super Mario Bros. U. And with that art style in Mario Maker, it's like I feel like they can't come back with a new one until there is a brand new art style with a new look and, and a new feel to it. Yeah. Whereas I think that people are so used to understanding we've, we've had all the Mario games, the classics, right? Mario 1, Mario 3, Mario World. People Mario are so 1, familiar. Mario 2. Oh, <laughs> so often. <laughs> um, but like people know what those games are, what they feel like, what is possible in them. They've had enough new Super Mario Bros. games in the last... 15 years yeah, yeah, yeah. that we know what that looks like as well. So I feel like this kind of is the answer of what does a 2D Mario game look like now? And it's like, oh, it's whatever you can come up with knowing the the tools and what creative resources you have available to you. And that's why I think that we're seeing such awesome 2D levels where it's like Nintendo kind of understood that they couldn't blow our minds with yeah, a, yeah. a 2D Mario game, but they could let everyone else do it and them making their levels as well. It's like I would argue that the story mode in this game is one of the better 2D Mario games I've ever played. Yeah. And it's like, but if it was just that, it would have been like, whatever. Who cares? You know? yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the, just the, the maker aspect of it, I think, is the, the the pitch to get people in. And then the quality content of the levels that are made is the the meat of it. Have you played more of it? I know you did a you did a brief scenario yeah. thing on uh, the games cast, but we haven't heard from you in a while. Yes, I am. Um, there's 100 levels that Nintendo made. There yeah. are three that have just stumped me. Really? Yeah. And I, I haven't put too much time into them, but yeah, there's one with a, you got to get a Koopa shell to like go through the whole level with you to like solve puzzles. Yeah. And like, I'm in the last room and I just don't, I don't get what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you're, you still recommend it? You oh still my God. It? Yes. Yeah. Man, it's so good. It's been that thing of like, oh man, I definitely don't want to create them. And I also don't want to be tortured. Like I see Andy being tortured in his Twitch highlights, which are hilarious. Uh, but I want to play the 100 levels. But then it's just Moonlighters do good. But then yeah. I'm like, you know what? I got the RTX flight. Maybe I'll knock out Moonlighter on the way. Then yeah, I'll go man. over there and play some Mario. Play Excellent game. I can't wait to for it to be out a little longer and to see like the here's the levels you need to play. So I yeah. just download them all. Yeah, I think yeah, I might exactly. do it before RTX. Okay. Nathan Brandt writes in. To patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says shovel Knight has been celebrating its fifth birthday last week with a major campaign expansion with a humongous card game mechanic as well as a multiplayer fighting mode on the way. It's got me wondering why shovel Knight and shovel Knight is never really talked about when quote best ongoing game awards are being discussed. I don't necessarily think that Shovel Knight should win over something like Destiny 2, but man, after three story expansions, a co-op expansion, and a fighting game expansion, the humble Kickstarter indie has really come a long way despite having already been damn near perfect at launch. So Nathan, when you bring up the best ongoing game awards, I think you're referencing the E3 stuff that we talked about last week, the Critic Awards, when Andrea and I went through the Jeff Keighley, uh, uh, with, which we voted on, but the Judges Awards from E3 and stuff. There, I think the holdup would be was Shovel Knight this stuff playable at E3? I don't know. I, I didn't I see it. it Nobody tried to book me in an appointment for Shovel Knight stuff there. And then beyond that, expanding it beyond in just in general of why people aren't beyond why people aren't like, uh, oh man, Shovel Knight's the best ongoing game and stuff. I think it's just the fact that Shovel Knight speaks to such a niche audience. And I don't think they, I think it's rare that they go outside of that audience to really bang the drum. Yeah. Like I don't get Shovel Knight press releases. When I redo the news every day, I don't see Shovel Knight news stories on IGN or GameSpot or Twin, well, I'm probably on Twin Infinite, but I, I don't see it. I think that Shovel Knight it's, I, I mean, I love it. One of my favorite games. Yeah. I think that it did itself a disservice with the rollout plan of how it put its games out. Having everything, all the different releases yeah. that we got, the like Plague Knight and stuff, those are full campaigns. They might as well have been full games. And I feel like people, because of the way they were titled and the way that they are packaged, is kind of this like, especially back then, it was the ongoing thing of you buy it, you get yeah. it forever. Um, and now with the Treasure Trove stuff, it's like, it. It feels lesser than it actually is. Like those yeah. were sequels. Agreed. Um, or at least the the most Spectre Knight one was hundred percent a like sequel, but it felt and was marketed as, oh, just another part of Shovel Knight, right? Yeah. And I think with all this stuff, like it's insane there's about to be a uh, multiplayer battle mode. Like that's awesome. But I don't think that that's gonna have the same type of like excitement. And even with the King's Knight, I'm so stoked for that. More Shovel Knight, it's gonna be in a new full game, but it's still I'm not I think not gonna hit on the level Shovel Knight did or Shovel Knight 2 would in title alone. Yeah. I mean that's the biggest thing. And I you know, I, again I think Yacht Club's doing just fine. I think they've yeah. done really, really well. And of course, we don't want to be the schemey business people, but 
even removing the dollars and cents from it, it does come down to how you're covered in the games industry, where it can be that the hardcore Shovel Knight fans know all this and do all this, but like, and I know that the the uh, expansions have been great. I've known that you get everything for free if you bought the game. I, I've seen all that. I've heard all that. I know all that. That just doesn't resonate. DLC does not resonate the same way as there's a new game. Imagine if, I mean, that game, I don't, and uh, we're not inside the boardroom at Yacht Club Games, and I'm sure it's just their cafeteria. But like, you know, of why they want it. I mean, obviously they made this promise they're going to keep doing that. But even beyond that, why there isn't a more, hey, everybody, new things happening. This is what it is. Let's get out in front of it. Let's go do this. I mean, they might be a success story to the point that they just want to do right by the fans and be yeah. right. And that's great. Absolutely. That's awesome. Do that. But then to your question, Nathan, it's harder to spread the word about that. It's harder for, to get people excited about that and get them out there. Yeah. yeah. Tim, mm -hmm. it's time to squat up. But this one's a bit different. Ooh. Alex has made a new segment called Squad Up, Mario Make Me. Ooh. I have a suggestion for a new temporary segment on Kind of Funny Games Daily. For as long as Mario Maker 2 is the hot game, how about we spotlight one best friend every episode to help spread the word on their incredible creations. I call this segment, I don't care what you is, I already said it. Squad up, Mario, make me. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, he's probably just suggesting this so that we'll read his creator ID on the air and he'll get those damn sweet, sweet likes that he so desperately craves. And I, to that I say, how dare you? On an unrelated note, I actually just realized that I've created a couple of cool Mario Maker levels. <laughs> hey, maybe I'd be perfect for the first episode of this new segment. I've created two levels so far, and combined they have over 14 likes. Over 14, huh? That could mean 15 likes, or it could mean 10 million. <laughs> You'll have to look me up to find out for sure. <laughs> my maker name is Laney, L-A-I-N-E-E, -E, my dog's name, and my creator ID is S S N. 8PFMQF. For those of you who don't know, uh, you search creators by going to the course world, uh, click the magnifying glass in the top right, and type in the ID. Go get Alex some of them sweet, sweet likes that he may or may not want. Alex, I appreciate this. Squad up Mario Make Me is the hot topic for the foreseeable future. Feel free. Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Send in your Mario Maker levels or Mario Maker levels you think that you see that are cool. Well, you see them. You think they're cool. Yeah. You don't think you see them. You play them, they're probably cool. You know what I mean? Did I see it? I don't know. Did you see it, Kevin? Kevin, are you blacking out right now? <laughs> Time for your wrong. This is where the people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games right in. Kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. It tells us what we screw up as we screw it up. Today's one of those days that I feel like I fucked a lot up. You didn't. A lot of editorializing going on. A lot of you. Here's this thing that's breaking. And it's like, that's not, I'm not going to break that. That's not like some crazy things happening. I'll get to it later. So I'm just giving Lord of Pwn one. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake has only been said to coming first to PlayStation 4 slash PlayStation. The rumors are that it'll come to PC later, much like Octopath Traveler did a year after uh, coming to Switch, but has not come to other consoles. So that's exactly what I said. I want to know about the Xbox. What about the Xbox? Somebody else will correct that one. They'll, you're wrong each other, and they'll both contradict each other, and it'll go nowhere. Here it comes. Uh, while that happens, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. If you didn't know, each and every week on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can watch us record it live, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. You can watch it later, youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, podcast services around the globe um tomorrow let's talk about your hosts uh tuesday it's gonna be me and andrea wednesday it's gonna be me and gary Witta. thursday there's no show it's fourth of july america's Blow independent y'all and then friday there's no show because we're going to rtx in austin okay. we hope you'll come out and hang out with us remember you can come to our signing friday i forget if tickets are sold out so i just keep promoting it uh and then of course we have panels saturday uh kind of funny we need your sub more than funhouse at 2 p.m and michael jones and greg miller let's see what happens at 5 30 p.m the entirety of kind of funny will be there it's true so first this, time ever this, uh, if you're on the fence about going this is the year after baby. years and years weeks and weeks months and months of begging barrett you are invited to things come to it and he's like no i'm not gonna come you didn't buy me a ticket i need a plane ticket i need a hotel he's finally coming everybody's coming i need a hotel oh, that's oh. him man oh man i'm just saying like you know what i mean he's like oh you didn't invite God. me I'm like i clearly invited you yeah. i said come to the show and he's like no i'm not going i'm like he has money for hats not for hotel rooms 